Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the program. Today, we are going to work on the kernel in Serenity OS, and we are going to work on user credentials. So the way that we currently store um, user ID, group ID, and uh, stuff like that for a, each process is that we store them here in this protected values part of the process data structure. and. Um, when you ask for one of these values, you only get one at a time. And this always seemed like kind of non-atomic and racy to me. And now that we are fixing multi-core related issues, this is one of those long-standing uh, things in our kernel that I never quite liked. So uh, today we are going to make a credentials object. And we're going to put all these things into the credentials object. And then um, if you ever wanted to inspect multiple uh, process credentials or process user credentials at the same time, uh, you could get the credentials object, which would be immutable. And then you would know that you're comparing the credentials exactly, exactly as they were atomically instead of potentially um, you know, getting um, an intermediate state that happened. Uh, so basically these things moving out um, also the extra group ids we're gonna we're gonna take those as well so everything user id and group id related we're gonna move to uh, credentials so um let's see how we do this we're just gonna call this credentials i guess we'll take those and we will replace this with a um well, a ref putter to credentials, let's say. Credentials. Then we need to include kernel credentials. And maybe it's time we update the date here. It's been a while. OK, so what is this thing going to contain? Mm. Well. We start with the basics. OK, so class credentials. And it's going to be reference counted. Atomic reference counted. OK, and then we want this thing to be immutable. So it's not going to be. Uh, possible to mutate the members uh, in any way after construction. Uh, and that's what gives us that nice atomicity guarantee that as long as you have a credentials object, you're inspecting uh, um, a coherent set of credentials as they were. Um, so let me just get all the includes here. All right. And we'll also get vector, I guess. Although maybe we don't need to store them in a vector since they're going to be fixed. So let's use a fixed array instead. And I think these uh, are distinct numeric, which have a default constructor, I think. So we don't need that. All right. So let's have accessors for these things. And then we will make them be private members down here so that there's no no public access or chance of mutation. OK. Const. Mm. Let's see, can we get this? Yes, we can. Uh, and we're not going to return it as a fixed array. We'll just return it as a span. That seems fine. All right. So the API for creating or constructing a set of credentials becomes something like error or non null ref footer to credentials uh, create. And then we will take in like all of the values. So uh, group ID git, and then I guess two sets more of these. So the effective user ID and the effective group ID, and also the saved set user ID and this um, 
the saved group ID. Is that what those stand for? I forget what they stand for. <laughs> um, SUID, saved UID, that, that's what it's for. Uh, let's see. So, and then we also need the um, the extra group memberships, which we will take as a span. Okay. So there's our factory function, and then we will also need a constructor, which takes all these things, although it won't take a span, it will take a fixed, alloc fixed array that we've allocated in the factory function, and then we should be good, I think. Uh, Okie dokes. So let's go ahead and try to implement this class here. Name espace kernel. Okay, credentials create. Um. Oh, how did I mess that up already? Uh, undefined template. Oh, of course, we need to actually include non null ref putter. Okay, so uh, we have to make sure that we allocate that fixed array. So let's get one of those things going. Extra gids array, try fixed array, group ID, create. Um, extra gids size. All right, if that works out, we should be good. Uh, extra gids array. Oh, wait, I have to iterate this with um, indices, actually, since I don't have a append on fixed array. Mm hmm. Yeah, actually, does fixed array have a way to construct from a span? Oh, it does. Oh, maybe we should try that. Let's try that. Create from extra gids. Oh, that's much nicer. So let's do it that way. Okay, so once we have that thing set up, we should be good to um, create our credentials. So that would be something like adopt. Um, maybe, uh, do I need ref better for that? I forget what that helper is. Adopt ref if non null. No throw, no, no, wait, that's not the thing I wanted. Adopt non null ref or enomem. It's a bit of a mouthful. Okay, and then user ID, group ID, effective user ID, effective group ID, saved user ID, and saved group ID, plus extra gids array. Okay, <laughs> I guess we could do this in a, you could, you could wrap it all up in one single thing like this. It's a little bit weird. Yeah, we can have them all temporary, that's fine. Okay, and then let's default out the destructor. But the constructor we need to actually implement. Although we don't need to say kernel colon colon quite so many times. Okay. Okay. K, K, and K. Extra gids is going to be move extra gids. All right. What did I mess up? Oh, did I not put them in the good order? Okay, there we go. So here's our credentials object. I think. 
I think that's good. Yeah. So now a bunch of things are going to break, of course. But let's see what breaks. Process.h. OK, so we probably have a bunch of helpers here that we need to fix, first of all. Uh, oh, I need to include ref putter. OK, so now these old accessors are not going to work anymore. So let's um, let's see. This accessor I don't even like because it returns a const reference to a vector, and we don't have that vector anymore. We lifted that, so let's remove that accessor and find a different way for anybody who uses it. We'll find a different way for them to work. Um, and I think what we want instead is some API like. Um, credentials. Yes. And then basically these, these functions, if you want to use them, they will basically be credentials, um, effective user ID, something like that. Although I think we should move all this stuff out of line so that we don't have to include yet another header. So let's take all of this stuff and put it at the bottom of process.h. And then we'll go ahead and make these out of line functions. I think that's OK. Um, yes. All right. OK. Uh, oh, wait, actually. Let's do some more multi cursor editing here. So, credentials. There we go. Did not make to, mean to take ppid out of line, actually. That was a little mistake. So, let's bring that back. Yeah, there we go. Parent process ID has nothing to do with the credentials. Credentials are strictly uh, about the user account. So let's leave that alone. Um, OK, so let's see what else is broken here now. OK, so this um, API in group, process in group, who uses that? Um, okay, so the file system. So we have a lot of code that looks sort of like this, um, where we get the current process, and then we ask a bunch of questions about the current process. Like first, we look at the effective user ID. Uh, we also check if it's a super user, which is um, checking if the EU ID is zero, I think. Yep. Uh, and then we ask further questions down here and more questions, blah, blah, blah. So the nicer way to do this um, would be to grab the credentials at the head of this function and then consistently query that credentials object um, so, that, so that you're always operating a, on a consistent set of credentials. But I think we probably have 100 plus problems like this in the kernel. So um, right now, we're going to focus on just getting the credentials object, object up and working. Uh, and then this will sort of be future cleanup to go and actually use the credentials object to, um, to just have consistent, coherent inspection of credentials. So um, yeah, so the problem here is we can't quite do this. So let's just um, do something like this, credentials. Oh, and here I need to include kernel credentials. And let's also bump the date here. All right. Calling a private destructor. Oh, did I make the destructor private? That was not quite my intent. OK. 
So what else do we have going on? We have the process constructor um, initializes these things um, by just poking each one into this. And this has to change now because we need to set up initial credentials. Um, and we can't quite just go ahead and allocate a credentials object here because we are in a constructor. Constructors are not allowed to fail in, uh, in our flavor of C++. So we're going to have to provide credentials to the constructor that then um, that the constructor can just install. So the constructor will have to take credentials and we'll have to deal with that uh, wherever the constructor is invoked. Credentials, and it should just be UID and GID mirrored into all the slots and no extra GIDs. Okay, so the process constructor has to change here. So it will take a non null ref pooter to credentials. And I guess the kernel forwarding header should probably have uh, credentials mentioned. Okay. Okay. And then, oh, we also need um, the accessor for the credentials. So non null ref putter credentials. Uh, credentials. It's, um, oh, right. So it's it's a ref putter here because we can't really have a non-null ref putter in protected values because it's default constructed. I suppose we could change that, but um, I'm just going to ignore that right now and put it maybe a fix me here. Um, this should be a non-null ref putter. Yes, because every process always has credentials. So we should we should be able to fix that with a constructor and some initializer list or initializer, constructor initializer list stuff. So what was going on here, by the way? Oh, this was a little mishap uh, <laughs> with my multi-cursor editing. Uh, let's go ahead and undo that. Okay, there we go. So, okay. So that file has no errors according to Zline at least. So let's build and see what comes up. So far so good. I was expecting more failures actually. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, inode metadata. All right. So here, um, we are getting the user ID, the group ID, and the extra git separately. So let's go ahead and do this instead. Process.credentials, which then allows us to do this. And maybe the future version of this would be um, even like having this function take a credentials object instead of a process object. But um, at the moment, taking a process object is how the API is used. So let's just go ahead with that. Oops. Okay. Uh, process CPP. Oh, did we have breakage here? Oh, right, the constructor change. So the constructor is invoked here. Um, and we need to pass a set of credentials instead. So we'll do something like credentials. 
And then we'll make some on the line above. So credentials are try credentials create. And I guess we have the UID and GID here. So three sets of those and no extra gids originally. Okay, fork.cpp. All right, so when we fork, then, hmm, I guess we should, we, all we need to do is just copy the credentials pointer because credentials are immutable. So two processes can share a credentials object because it will never change. So it's just ref counted. Um, that's actually pretty nice. And then execva. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, when you have a set UID or set set GID program, um, then we uh, take the owner of the file and make that the owner of the process that you're launching. As long as on as long as the executable is um, in a file system that's mounted with SUID allowed. Um, so here we need to set up credentials instead. So we have to create a new credentials object in case it's a set UID program. Um, and is this done before or after we commit to the executable? We commit to the new executable at this point, there is no turning back. Yeah, I think we can't. Um, we can't allocate after here. So we're going to need to allocate before this point or we'll be kind of screwed. So I think um, maybe we'll do something like this. So old credentials are the current credentials, basically. And the new credentials will be well, if it's not set UID, there will be the old credentials. But if it is set UID, um, we can take all of this stuff, move it up here, and then this is the part where we commit. So we just have to do it before this because after this point, we cannot fail. Um, we're committed to exec. Uh, so here, uh, we can do something like um, protected value of uh, data mutation scope. Protected values, credentials, new credentials. All right, we'll move the new credentials in at that point. Uh, and then we don't need to do it here, but we need to create our new credentials thing. So how would that look? Maybe something like So first we will sort of save what we currently have like this. Uh, because the issue is that a program has two separate flags, set UID and set GID. So we have to handle any combination of both of those flags. Okay. And then Yeah, I think this is what we're going to do. So we're going to grab these. And then down here, we will just make a new credentials object. Um, if this flag is true. So if executable is set ID, then new credentials is try credentials create. Uh, UID, old credentials UID, old credentials GID. And then I'm going to line break these because it's going to get real cramped up in here. New effective user ID and 
aged, new suet, and new, oops, new sgid. And then I guess when we exec, we still want to retain the um, extra group IDs as well. So those we will just get from the old credentials. Okay. That seems, it seems okay. Did we have more errors? Nothing to cry about, okay. Get UID.cpp. Okay. So now we are querying for syscalls, uh, handling syscalls that query user IDs and stuff. Okay, so here we want to write out um, three, all the three UID values. Okay, so we can't, we no longer have like a memory location that we can just copy from. So we're going to have to copy these out. Um, also, the naming convention here is a bit busted, actually. So let's fix that. Usually we, um, for user space pointers, we usually call them user underscore, just to make it abundantly clear that these are user space things. So I'm just going to fix that up while we're here. Since we're touching the lines anyway. Yeah, see here, user kids, for example. Um, I guess we have to copy them out to values. So let's, well, let's grab the credentials. Uh, credentials UID. Okay, and then like that. And then we do the same thing down here. So credentials. Okay. Good. And for the extra groups, same same basic idea. Yes. And I th think this will allow us to stop using the um, uh, big lock for a lot of these functions as well, which will be very nice. Um, because now they will only deal with this immutable uh, credentials object. Uh, so let's see. Is that file good? Seems good. Now we have to deal with set uid.cpp. Set uid. Oh, joy. Lots of errors. Okay. So let's see. Set EUID. Uh, and then it just sets it by doing like a write directly into it. But before that, we also have a lot of checks on the current state. So let's be good boys here and um, convert this to using the credentials object. Hmm. Maybe we should have an is super user helper actually. Is super user. Yeah, it seems okay to have that. Okay, so so far so good. And now we need to um create a new credentials object. Um, so I guess, hmm, how do we do this? So cr new credentials, uh, credentials, create, 
and then now we have to like replace everything here. So, I mean, we're going to keep using the old values, of course. So the only thing that we're actually changing is the EU ID. So that would be the one that comes right here. And then the rest we just keep. Yeah, so changing credentials is a very rare operation, of course. So this isn't performance sensitive by any means. Um, so allocating objects here is, should be totally, totally fine. Um, nobody is uh, set UIDing in a loop that I can think of, at least. <laughs> here we go. And then credentials is move new credentials. Um, but we try here, actually, which means that this is a failure point. So I think if we fail the try, we should not update the dumpable state, um, which does what exactly? Oh, it's also in the protected values. Um, so I think that should probably be down here for um, maximum niceness. And, you know, maybe we could even um, do this without having two separate protected data mutation scopes. But for now, let's just uh, do something like that. Okay. Mm, I don't know where to put it. Yeah, there seems fine. All right. So next function, same concept, basically, I think. First, grab current credentials, use those instead of the helper functions. And then this goes down here. We want to create a new credentials object. Probably just going to copy this logic right here. But we want to replace the EGID this time. So that's the new EGID. And then the EUID stays the same. Sure. Other than that, we are good. So move new credentials and boom. Okay. And then just more of the same. <laughs> all right. All right. We're going to get through this. So same transformations. Um, and then here we are copying new UID into all three UID fields. So new UID. Like that. And oh, and we forgot to grab the existing credentials, making use of those. Okay. Hmm. All right, we have, oh wait, this one as well, credentials. Okay, more of the same. It's a little bit repetitive, <laughs> like uh, subtly different, but we definitely don't want to screw these up. So here, create new credentials. This time we're swapping out all the GIDs. So new GID, new GID, new GID. All right. Okay, cool. And let me grab one of these things again so I can edit it quickly. Set kid. Now we're doing set REUID. So set real and effective user ID. 
Um, and then, all right, we'll grab the current credentials. Lots of these. Mm, oh, I need to capture that. Do a tighter capture, actually. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and then here we will create the new ones with the new real user ID here and the new effective user ID here. Everything else stays the same. Okay. So far, so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we're <laughs> plowing forward. So we have a bunch of these. Okay, here we're going to capture our credentials by reference. Okay. And now we're swapping out all the user IDs, all three values. So we can definitely do that. We just need, I'm just gonna grab this thing right here. Oh, is super user. Did I miss that in the previous function? No. Okay. Um, so user ID and the saved user ID as well. Write new SUID. Okay. Now this is definitely a little bit cumbersome, <laughs> but we're getting close to the end here. So let's um, plow ahead. Oh, not good enough. There we go. Okay, credentials. Okay, and now updating all the GIDs. Okay, so kind of what this other one did, but the other way around. So um, well, we want to keep the UID and then update the GIDs. So new argid new e jid and new s jid cool mm. just checking what my phone is doing nothing terribly important right now so ignoring that and is this the last function yes it is okay so set groups uh, which tells us a set of extra groups, not our primary GID, but a um, set of extra groups. Also, this should be a group ID here, not a JID T, because in the kernel we use um, two separate types, user ID and group ID, just to keep them distinct. Set groups should definitely, oh, get groups should use group ID here as well. Let's fix that while we're touching this code anyway. Um, so that we don't have to do weird typecasts. Okay, or maybe we didn't have to, but anyway. Uh, get groups, did I already touch get groups? We did. Okay, so I just needed to fix the group ID thing, yeah. Um, okay, so we have a set of extra kids here so if you're setting well 
let's just approach this like the others. So grab credentials, use credentials to test is super user. Uh, if you're setting account zero, number of extra groups, then we are just gonna, um, we have to create a new credentials object with credentials is try credentials create and then everything should be the same except the extra gids which should be empty so e e s s empty boom but if it's not empty then we have to create some storage for the gids and then create a new set of credentials with the extra gids. Okay, so here hmm, what does this do? So it makes a vector, copies them from the user space array into the vector, sure, and then we use a hash table to deduplicate so that you don't have the same extra gid more than once and we also ignore if you try to set your primary GID as one of the extra GIDs. Seems fine. Um, but we need a um, contiguous span of uh, extra GIDs here, so we can't pass the hash table storage into the uh, credentials constructor, so we will just, I guess we can just <laughs> move the deduplicated ones back into the uh, new extra gids array that we have here. So we'll just move them back in. Um, is there some, um, isn't there like a values or something like that? No, there isn't. Okay. Oh, we'll make a loop. Unique extra gids, new extra gids, append extra gid. Okay, there we go. And then we just need to make a credentials object at this point. We don't need to do any of this. We just need to make our credentials object. So m protected values try uh, credentials. So same as up here actually, except now we have a span to provide to that thing. So that will be the new extra gids span. Cool. If this works <laughs> on the first try, I will be um, very happy with myself. Did I miss any of those is super user things? I feel like I was just blasting through here for a moment. Credentials, always checking the credentials. Yeah, okay, now we're good. Yeah, and then of course, as I was saying earlier, we'll have a whole bunch of places in the kernel that are uh, racy because they uh, query like partial credentials independently and we'll have to find and fix those kind of things but that is much much easier to do now and then i think also there are places where it makes a lot of sense to uh, pass credentials instead of passing a process because you want to be testing something against a set of credentials. You don't necessarily want to test like, oh, is, um, like if you're asking, oh, can, can we execute this file? Really what you want to ask is like, can you execute this file with this set of credentials? Not necessarily, can this process execute this file? Or at least I feel like that would be a, a nice separation of concerns. So I guess I forgot to update the CMake lists, did I? Um, yes, I did. Mm. 
Will it run? Mm, oh, it didn't quite build. What am I missing? Process EUID. Oh, didn't I move all those to process CPP? Uh, did I mess that up? Seems like I did not do the... Well, whatever happened here, uh, we're missing some, so let's add them. It's always exciting when you make uh, some big edit to see <laughs> to see if it will work. How big is this? Two eighty three insertions, one nineteen deletions. Oh, oh, oh! We booted. <laughs> That's very nice. All right, so. I would say that was a successful refactor then. If we're able to boot, that means that um, all the basics are working right. Um, of course, let's run our test suite to see if it flushes out any um, goofiness. But I, I think this is a generally sound refactor. And um, yeah, it opens up a lot of additional cleanup work that we can do, but as a starting point, it seems pretty good. Yeah, so far so good here. And um, yeah, I think I'm happy with this. Yeah, so let's let's do a commit out of these things. Oh, what did we miss? Just um, auto formatting. Okay, so um, move uh, add credentials to hold UID um, UID, GID, UID, EGID, um, UIDs, and JITs. Mm. User and group IDs. Okay. Um, this, um, a credentials, credentials. Object contains the following um, fields or following things UID, GID, EUID, EGID, SUID, SGID. Oh, wait, like that. Extra JITs. Um, credentials um, are immutable. Um, and um, can be uh, da, da, and 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 um, children child processes inherit the same credentials um, originally initially inherit the credentials uh, object from there. Uh, parent. Let's see. This uh, patch adds a new object to hold user um, the user's credentials. Uh, hold a hold a processes user credentials yeah let's let's um, 
tidy this up a little bit so I don't have quite that many lines. <laughs> Okay. Yes. Um the uh da 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 I guess we should clarify um when is this call um when it, Whenever a process changes one or more of its um, user group IDs, a new credentials object is constructed. Yeah. Mm -mm. Any code that uh, wants to inspect and act on uh, a set of credentials can now do so knowing that um, knowing that they haven't that 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 can do so um, without cons without worrying about um, race worrying about um, data races yes yeah and even if even if the data race idea is is really strange um because you know who's who's gonna be changing their um user id or gid uh to try to try to catch a race but it just seems like a better design to have it as like a single immutable object that um will just replace and then it just moves around acting like uh, like an immutable little unit of data so I think this is this is much nicer than what we had and yeah this will be the end of today's video so turned into a, a bit of kernel refactoring and uh, cleanup and um, as I was saying, I think this will allow us to um, to switch out of the big lock for a lot of these things. So maybe we should look at that right away, actually. Yeah, let's look at that right away, see if we can get some more syscalls off the big lock, because that will be a nice payday here. So get UID, do you need the big lock? Currently, you're taking it, but all that you do is you just grab the UID. Um, and I feel perfectly fine saying that you don't need the big lock to just look at that one thing. So you don't need it. Get GID, same thing here. Yeah, all of these simple ones that only access, only check, um, an individual field, totally fine. And then now it's the same thing for these more complex ones that look at multiple fields. That should also be fine now without the big lock, because as long as you grab the credentials object, you have your own copy of it. Now you can inspect that all you want. So we shouldn't need any of these to hold the big lock. Get groups, same exact story. Um, yeah, there we go. Oh, shoot, I forgot to update to group ID here. I'm gonna go ahead and put that into the previous commit, actually. Okay. Get UID. No. Get GID. Uh, no. None of these things. Get um, you don't need. And get groups also does not need. 
yeah, I think those are fine. Oh, that's a bit of a rebuild. Um, let's see if we can do all of these because the set UID ones as well. Um, did they also become safe now? I, th I feel like they did because now it's very, very straightforward. Like we just build the credentials object and then when we're finished building it, we just slam it in there. Um, there's no, um, no race window in the same way as we had before. So I think, I think there's a huge payday here actually. Set EUID. Yeah, they're all just making credentials object and then installing them. Yeah. And then the protected data mutation scope, we should probably put a um, spin lock or something into that thing so that, um, so that we don't allow concurrent access, concurrent mutating access to the protected values as well. But even so, since we're only swapping out one pointer, uh, let's see. Yeah, these are fine. I think these are fine as well. Yeah, it's all the same type of code. Hmm, very, very nice. Set groups. Okay, so did we do something weird here? No shared data access. No, not really. Cool. So the list set UID. No. No. Set groups. No, no, no. No. This is so nice. I think I got all of them. Um, yeah, it's going to take a moment to rebuild everything that depends on that, but I feel very good about this change. So, dun, dun, dun. it's a lot of, a lot of syscalls um, getting off the big lock here in one fell swoop. Okay. Kernel. Um, Mark, get um, and get a set. <laughs> this is um, uh, sys calls that get set um, user group ID. Not needing big lock. Oh, that fit on one line. That's super nice. Uh, now that these operate on the uh, neatly atomic and immutable credentials ob um, object, uh, we can mark them as um, they should no longer require the process big lock for synchronization. Yes, I believe that is accurate. So that is super cool. Brings us a fair bit closer. How many of these no's do we have remaining? 77 remaining. And how many yeses do we have? Wait, do we have 77 yeses as well? Is that true? 77? Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> We're exactly, we have exactly 77 of each. So we're 50% of the way exactly 
to um, getting the syscalls off of the big lock. That is real sweet. And just a smoke check here that we can boot without falling apart. Come on now. Yeah, we are live and kicking. That's super cool. So yeah, this will be the end of the video then. Um, very cool. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Bye.